Greetings. Today I'd like to do a quick first look at the new eSmart Trio battery distributor from Audio Root. This is, I think, probably the, the, the battery distributor to, that'll solve my battery distributor needs and I'm done buying new battery distributors. You might remember that a little while ago, I did a video about the Deity SPD-1. And this is a great device, don't get me wrong. But the only problem with this device is all the outputs are high rows 4. And high rows 4 has a maximum sustained or continuous current of about 2.5 amps. You pull more than that, you risk melting the cable because the pins used in high rows 4 are too small for higher current. Whereas this audio route, this new audio route, in addition to having three inputs, hence the name Trio, and a bunch of high rows outputs, it also has a TA4 output, which can do 5 amps, which means it can fully handle the load of a sound device's 8 series field recorder because the sound devices like draws if you're running all your channels you've got with phantom power and whatnot you're in the one and a half to two amps of draw and then if you are also charging one of the NPF batteries on it because you use NPF as a bridge battery charging the battery will be three amps on its own so in total it'll draw basically close to five amps if you have battery charging happening at the same time that you're recording. And so this eSmart Trio can handle that no problem because it has a TA4 output in addition to the high rows outputs. So let's take a quicker, closer look at this, right? So on the top, you've got screws where you can move the clip that they give you from the bottom to the top if you want, depending on what works best for your bag. On the bottom, you've got the clip and you've got uh, pinout drawings for the TA4s and the high rows. You'll note that for the drawing for the high rows, it does not supply smart data to the high rows outputs. It only does smart data on the TA4 output. And that's generally fine, right? Because you're gonna send that to your, your eight series and then it will be displaying the overall stats plus this unit itself on the front panel will also display overall stats. So let's go over the front panel a little bit real quick first, right? So on the side, you've got power button to turn on the unit and you've also got a button for turning the two aux high rows outputs on and off individually. So if you've got a device that you don't need to power all the time, you put it on one of those auxes, and just leave it connected and only power it when you need to power it. You've got an additional, additional high rows four output on the front. So if you need to plug something in, you know, ad hoc, you can do that. You've got a USB-C output. I used a USB-C tester that I have to see what it supports in terms of output and it will do USB-C power delivery 2.0 up to 45 watts and I will include a photo of that here for so you can see all the, the specifics and then it's also got a regular USB-A that does qu quick charge and then you got these LED meters on the sides plus a bigger display for the overall stats. The inputs, there's three of them. Two of them, that inputs one and two, behave like the two inputs on the DAD SPD-1 in that when you have batteries connected to both of them, it will draw down both batteries at the same time. It does not do one and then the other. Now, the way batteries work is that if you have 
batteries with different levels of charge. So say this one's at 90 and this one's at 50, right? While it draws both of them down, it will draw the higher charge one down faster until they meet equilibrium. And then at equilibrium, it will then draw them down together until you eventually hit zero. So you got to be a little careful. It's the whole, oh, you know, turn one, plug one in, and then 10 minutes later, plug the other one in. doesn't really work because it's going to pretty quickly make them catch up and be in equilibrium. And then once they're in equilibrium, they're going to come down together. So you got to keep an eye on it and make sure you swap one of your batteries when you're getting down in the, you know, 10% or overall level because you want to make sure you don't drop. Now, this third input, which you can see is labeled high priority, is actually separate. It will take priority over these battery inputs one and two when you have something connected and powering it. And that can be a third battery, or it could be an AC adapter, such as the one that comes with the Sound Devices 8 series. And so what does that mean? You can have hardline power. So if I plug this in and I will turn it on, one, two, three, and it comes on. And it's being powered by external, and so you get that EXT instead of the battery reading, right? It doesn't know a percent remaining or anything because obviously AC adapter, there is no percent remaining. But you can have it be powered by the AC adapter when you have the ability to plug in. And then if you need to take your bag with you and you can't plug in, well, then you can have the two batteries on batteries one and inputs one and two that will power the device and you're good to go for a long time, right? And you'll see right now it says no battery on either of the two inputs. I'm gonna det detach this for the moment. And so here I have a regular eSmart battery. These are the audio route. Um, 96 neos right and i will turn this on again one two three and when it's plugged in if you want to turn it off again you have to hold it in and it gives you the little display and then it'll turn off when you hold it right so you don't have to worry about if you accidentally touch the button it's not going to turn on by accident it's not going to turn off by accident you have to hold it for a couple of seconds and then it'll turn on and so now with just one battery connected, you can see that it is showing the battery meter. The second side says no battery. And then over here, the overall stats, right? And one of the things you'll notice is that there's none of these displays show the temperatures of the battery. It only shows the um, information about cycle count, voltage, and um, amps, right? Another difference, slight difference is between this unit and the SPD-1. If you see here, the number of decimal places, it only has one decimal. So the SPD has actually got two decimal. So it's actually slightly more accurate in its reading, but still in terms of like, what do you need? That's not really that important for monitoring device. You can see it's estimating with this one battery, it's 79% and over 100 hours of runtime because obviously there's no load on it right now. If I plug in another battery, so I will plug this into the battery two slot. What you will see, if it'll focus, give it a chance to focus. Hello, come on, there. So, the percent overall percentage has changed because it's mixing the two batteries together. Also the uh, total runtime, it's combining that together and it actually feeds that combined synthesized status to the output port. So 
your eight series or whatever you're powering from it will know, hey, I've got 22 hours of runtime or whatever when because the two batteries combined at whatever your overall draw is supports it. And if I hook up a third battery, you'll see that it has again updated to reflect the fact that the out total output and runtime remaining are based on the three batteries. You'll see that the primary uh, battery is taking up one slot in the vertical bars, and the other battery one and two are taking up, each take up half. So you can still see the stat individual status of all three batteries when you have three batteries plugged in like this. And to make this a little easier, I'm gonna disconnect a couple of these. So now, the other thing I was gonna show you is if I take this uh, TA4 male to female that I had Gotham Sound create for me, right? I can connect this to the output and I will connect it to the input on the SPD-1. I'm using the SPD-1 here so instead of trying to show you this on the 8 series because the audio is actually being recorded on the 8 series and it's it would be a little awkward to pull the bag up to show you. But here you can see that the telemetry is coming through to the SPD-1. As you change the batteries, what it shows for percent remaining and amp current draw and everything is reflects what the main display on the trio shows. And the one thing, as I said earlier, the trio doesn't show you anything about battery temperatures. The battery temperature that the SPD-1 is reporting is not actually related to the battery temperatures of the batteries themselves. Instead, it seems to be, I think there's a thermal sensor inside the trio, and the temperature seems to be related to the temperature in the trio rather than any of the individual batteries. So just one thing to be aware of. But the telemetry works. And so, like I say, on your eight series, you can have it showing you everything, all the batteries aggregated together and get an idea of what your actual overall runtime is going to be, which is nice. The other thing I want to talk about is the aux ports. They're a little weird to turn on and off, at least at first. If you just tap the aux button, what shows up is a thing that shows you, hey, aux one, aux two, right? And I'll do that again. And then if I tap it, I just turned on aux two, right? Because it lit up green. And if I tap it and then I hold the aux button, it'll turn off aux two and now it's red, right? When the aux thing is up, to turn aux one and on and off, you actually use the main button while this little pop-up is up. So actually, if you hit the main button, it cycles through stuff. So it's showing me the temperature of battery one, two, and three and cycle counts for them, cell information, serial numbers. So get it to focus and sorry, temperatures, etc. And we're back. If I do this and then I hit this, it turns on. And if I hold it, it'll turn off the aux output. So main button is not main when that aux pop-up is up. It is how you turn aux one and off, on and off when you're in the aux button mode. Clear the, after a bit, it clears and goes back to the main display. So that's a quick look at the new eSmart Trio from Audio Root. I'm going to be putting this in my sound bag. I've got two of these um, eSmart battery holsters from Audio Root as well. I've been a big fan of these. I like them a lot more than the traditional battery cup 
because uh, these things can pop off. So the way I'm going to have this rigged is I'm going to have the two battery holsters in the bag going into the batteries one and two. And then I'm going to have, because I usually carry it in the bag, I'm going to have the AC adapter going into the battery three. And that way, if I've got some place where I've got shore power, I can run indefinitely off of shore power and power everything in the bag, both the eight series and whatever else I need at the time through the other high rose outputs. And if I need to take the bag on the go, then even though I can leave that AC adapter plugged in, since it's not providing power, it's just going to be drawing power from the battery one and two. And you got redundant batteries, so you can do hot swap and not have anything in the bag have to be turned off. So I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks. Cheers.